Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors Amazon and Trend Micro. Welcome back everyone, you're watching theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Mookie Bonds. Uh, flagship program, we go out to the events and start to see the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and my next guest is Eddie Saddle, CTO, Emerging Business at CSC, uh, CSC, Management Consulting Firm, uh, System Integrator, whatever they're called these days, a partner of all the people who are making um, products and software and cloud. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you very much, nice to be back. So one of the big things that's going on right now, we just talked to Illumio, because they're disrupting the whole security space, perimeterless security's big, is obviously that, you know, everything's getting thrown in the air and where it lands, kind of nobody knows, but it's a big opportunity to clean up the mess, build on top of the, the new foundation called the reality of today, which is API economy, notifications, mobile infrastructure, perimeterless security. Yep, absolutely. Your job is to figure that out. So where are we? What are you guys doing? Where is this, give us the state of the union. Yeah, it's, so it's really interesting uh, because I have all the emerging technology side. I, we're doing a lot of stuff with cyber and changing the way that we're looking at cyber security. Most people look at it from a managed security service provider, which is what CSE has been for years. Uh, but now we're starting to look at, we have a new project, uh, Network Defense Analytics, that we're building with some of our customers to be able to look at new ways to combine a bunch of different data sets, whether it's from a, a cloud, from infrastructure, from application services, whatever it happens to be, pull it all together and get kind of a complete picture and do machine learning algorithm models to be able to then determine what the threat vectors are and do real risk management rather than security management because like you said, there's no perimeter anymore. There's no e ingress, egress. You can't really tell where traffic's coming from, where it's running on. So in order to get to that point, you have to look at completely different data sets and do stuff with it. So we just had Alan Cohen on from Illumio, Chief Commercial Officer, who said they walk into a customer and say, you know, um, how many rules do you have in your firewall rules? The four million, he goes, how many are active? They go, we don't know. That brings up the whole cyber threat. Obviously incidents are up, breaches are up. Um, this is now commonplace. What do customers do? What are they, what's, <laughs> besides sit there and cry in their beer, or you know, weep in their wine, what do they do? They just get, do they call you guys up? Do you guys deploy some software? Is it big data? Um. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, they haven't had a lot of choices, right? I mean, SIM has been the answer to everything. It's all rules-based, and it doesn't really solve for a lot of the newer advanced persistent threats and the newer ways that people are being attacked. Uh, you're never going to catch the guy coming in through the air conditioning system, for instance, right? But the kind of traditional rules-based models, because you don't know to look for that. What's really becoming important is getting learning models that can actually look at behavior and detect anomalies, build clusters around it, and then figure out, you know, is this really something an analyst should look at? Because if you look at some of the, the socks that are around the globe that we run, right, some of them get millions of alerts every day. Even with a thousand people, you can't cover a million alerts. So if you're trying to look at those and action them and do something about it to catch that one that's really a problem, you've got to do really advanced analytics. So the two realms are crossing, hence the reason they've joined the groups and I've uh, taken the CTO role for both and, uh, and cloud as well, is pulling all that together has become incredibly important as people change where they run, what they're running on. I also have the mobile side of the house too. So talk about the CIA. Obviously, not you really can't talk about the CIA because you don't work there, but the CIA's relationship with Amazon. I find it to be a trend that, that really speaks to what the consumerization of IT is turning into. The CIA is announcing basically that they're using Amazon for all their consumption. I mean, that's a government agency. If they're using Amazon, and they move like glacier speeds, pun intended, what does an enterprise do? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because you know, we, one of our guys from our defense and intelligence group is speaking here at the conference on Thursday about moving the government to the cloud and the defense group, and that's one of the big things those three letter agencies you're talking about, getting them migrated over, keeping them secure, getting better data security around it. And you know, we're even open sourcing a project called Easy Bake that came out of one of those three letter agencies that CSE wrote for them. And we're now going to open source that and make it available to commercial market. 
because the, the way data is secured has to be at the object level now and it has to be abstracted away because you don't know where it's going to run. It might be running in AWS, it might be running in a data center, it might be running on somebody's mobile phone, and all those have to be the same level of security. So what is the biggest security challenge right now that, that you see in the current state of the enterprise? Uh, I think the, the biggest problem is people still think about securing something. And you know, whether it's securing a server, a data center, securing something at the edge, whatever it is, they're ta thinking about securing something, being a physical uh, object of some sort. What's really, what people need to start thinking about is securing the data as an object, right? I don't really care about if you compromise my server, if it has nothing on it that matters, that you can get to, right? If I've secured the data object and made that completely secure, I actually don't care where it runs, I don't care what it's doing, as long as you can't get to it and do anything meaningful with it, it just doesn't matter. Is it a big data problem or is it a compute problem? What is the current market bear for you as a tool, tooling, resource? Well, so I think it's a, a data security problem, which everything is a big data problem now because it's a marketing term, but I mean, from a data, it is a data problem and it is an advanced analytics problem. Whether the data set's really small or really large, securing at the object layer that piece of data and then be able to trust back the identity of the person to be able to get to that data object. So, you know, I don't care if my CEO's laptop is stolen because everything on his laptop is useless unless my CEO is there to provide the right authentication to get to the data object or, you know, with or the right or challenge. Or like doing what Apple does, which is you blow away the hard drive. Sure, and yeah. And it boots up. That, that's the, the don't get it back way, but I actually might want to be able to get something back at some point. You know, just in case I recover the device, I might want to actually be able to get the data back off of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than, you know, once and zero wipe and then it's completely worthless, so. I mean, it's, it's really hard to do time machine for the enterprise, if you think about it, because there's a lot of things going on there with security. We're talking about CSC, what are the biggest things that you're working on right now that you're excited about? I mean, a lot of people don't know, but CSC is really uh, uh, doing a lot of work. I'm on the tech talk, they have a, the, the tech town halls, uh, crowd chats all the time. Um, great, smart people there. You guys are building your own products, your own cloud for customers. Yeah, we, we've... You're not uh, just a channel partner, you're a channel system. That, that is true. We, we have uh, done a whole lot of stuff over the last couple of years with acquisitions, uh, companies like 426 and the Defense and Intelligence and InfoChimps, uh, on the commercial side of big data, service mesh for the agility product and cloud orchestration, and, and on and on, right? There's many of them, some very small and some much larger. But, CSE is becoming a product company in this emerging business group, right? We're focusing on the things that our customers talk to us about. Uh, when I go out and talk to it, the CIO, it's the conversations about how do I get better analytics or how do I migrate certain workloads to the cloud in a secure way and make sure that I'm not at risk for any of my high, high, high risk units within the company, whatever that is. How do I improve my manufacturing process? All these are data and analytics problems, they're cybersecurity problems their cloud problems, and helping them kind of understand and set their strategy and then leverage the products together as well as partner products, right? We don't really work without partners. Uh, we do uh, big data and analytics, for instance, all of our cloud implementations to date are on AWS. All of our in data center virtual ones are on OpenStack. We've done a lot of uh, code committing even back to the Red Hat OpenStack group. We work Let's talk about OpenStack. Them. OpenStack is really one of those things I have a problem with because I love, I hate OpenStack, I, no, I love OpenStack, here's my, here's my take on OpenStack. I love OpenStack, I hate OpenStack, I love OpenStack, and now I'm like, will OpenStack make it? So at first, OpenStack was clearly a beautiful thing, and then it became like a marketing ploy for people, then they cleaned up the community and got it on track, and now all those consolidations happening, people are concerned, is OpenStack going to make it, it's real. Well, uh, we've bet very heavily on it, so I really hope so. It's uh, better, right? So's yeah. HP. Yeah, we're, we, I mean, we're committing code back on a really regular basis from my teams to the OpenStack community. We're working with Red Hat to get a lot of next generation stuff. Red Hat bought Ink Tank, so we're helping to kind of move forward the Ceph work that's been going on with a lot of the other vendors out there that are relying on it to be important. I mean, we've done a bunch of stuff with the Swift work. Uh, you know, we're, we're pulling our partner network together, which is all of the big boys and we're forcing them to work with this model of OpenStack because it really works well for us for orchestration, for peaking and valleys in the workloads, and delivering to our customers what they need at the given time. Are you comfortable that there's a lot of meat on the bone at OpenStack right now? A lot of people are looking at it, the migration in and out of OpenStack and the consolidation recently 
you know, cloud scaling got sold to EMC for a yard sale. Um, Josh McKinty left, joined Pivotal. He was a founder of a company. Right. The founder leaving is a, it's like, the, <laughs> like, like what? That's a red flag. Yeah. Well, I, to me, I think there's a, there's a lot of things going on in that space, but I think, luckily, like you, you have, well, like, like, you have people yeah. like Red Hat who are making a big play, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're really investing a lot in it. They're buying up a lot of the people who are contributing code, and they're making a lot of inroads, and because they're doing it, so is Oracle, because Oracle always does the same thing Red Hat does when it comes to that side of the house. So there's a lot of, of big heavyweight being thrown behind it, and people who are traditionally open source, you know, groups. I mean, Oracle obviously not known for being yeah. open source, but that whole group in Oracle is very open source focused. So you've got a lot of heavyweight money behind it, and you got guys who know what they're doing in the open source community behind it. So I, I, I think there's a lot of play in it, and we're having a lot of success with customers. You know, I was talking to Illumio, and I love I love talking to startups about this too, and they're and doing the startup myself with CrowdChat. Is there's two ways to get paid, investors and customers. Right. So. In your case, OpenStack, the investors are the vendors. Look at the names, HP, Red Hat. So maybe there's an oligopoly forming, maybe that's my view, but, but okay, you need, some, you need some gravity. And then you have customers. And I just don't see the customer traction. Can you share with me what you're seeing? Because some people say, oh, customers are, sh are shipping with code, all this stuff's going on. I just don't, I don't see the, the cars come out of the assembly line. I see a lot of build your own car kind of thing, hobbyist, hacker, maker culture in cloud, but is OpenStack rolling out or is it too early to tell? Well, I mean, we have a couple hundred node clusters running in the big data world on OpenStack today. We've got a number of our customers who are doing smaller things. We've got a opportunity right now we're looking at for early next year that's about 300 nodes on OpenStack, so all over the board, <laughs> we're getting more and more OpenStack progress. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it really is starting to be adopted, and these are big enterprise players. They're Global 1000 companies. They're not little bitty shops for us. Well, I got to say, the next generation infrastructure is being defined by CSC. You guys provide a lot of solutions, and strategy, roadmaps, uh, and certainly the cyber and new emerging areas. Can you define that one more time for us, the area you work on? I mean, yeah. is, it, is it the hardcore cybersecurity? Yeah, so we're, we're looking at all the next generation stuff. So we're looking at big data and analytics, we're looking at uh, the next generation cybersecurity. We still have the traditional MSSP model too, and we're still one of the biggest there, but we're looking at the new stuff. Uh, we're looking very heavily in my groups at what we're doing with cloud and the agility platform, cloud migrations, supports for stuff like OpenShift and, and Azure and AWS and all those. Um, as well as on the IOT side, we're doing a lot of stuff to work with our customers to define what IOT really is for manufacturing, for the mining industry, and a project we have for, called SmartX. And then when you talk about the next generation infrastructure, we're leveraging a lot of the relationships we have with the big vendors of the world in our SI role and the traditional part of our company to get them to move in a direction that's working for our customers. So we're taking a lot of feedback. Our big customer conference, Aspire, was uh, just this previous week, and we got a lot of feedback from our customers on what they want to see, and a lot of stuff they don't want to see, and they told us our stuff that they don't want, so we're getting rid of it, and we're doing portfolio yeah. rationalization based on what customers' demands are and mapping it to the technologies that we understand. I think you guys have a really good opportunity. I think you guys actually look like you have a little bit more going on than Accenture, in my opinion, with the whole how you bring in the technology in. But the, what's interesting is that what Amazon does here at this event is, and what they're going for is, they want to be the data center in the cloud. Now that's, you could wish that and hope that. The reality is no one's there yet, but they're going there. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to connect the dots. So, what's the meatiest engagement that you're in that you feel shows that direction, that there will soon be an enterprise in the cloud? What are some of the things that you're pulling together that kind of tease out that direction? Yeah, I mean, that's the reason we're bringing these groups together, and you know, this is a recent announcement within the last quarter to bring us all together, and they moved me into this role to take them all on. Um, we're really seeing from our customers, if, if they are moving to the cloud and they stop, it's because they have a cybersecurity issue, or they can't figure out how to secure their data, or you know, it's one of these things which basically bringing these all together gets us a next generation offering that encapsulates all that together, and kind of helps 
you know, we can meet with the compliance officers, we can meet with the security guys, we can meet with all the folks and say, what is it that you need to see in order to get you to that next step? So, you know, bringing these together and working with all of them in combination is really what's making it possible for people to make that move because it's, it's generally a, a CIO who doesn't want to lose his crew of 500 people or a CISO who wants to be relevant or a compliance officer who says, oh no, we can't do that cloud thing because I don't understand it. It's yeah. not really as much of a technical hurdle anymore as it is a perception hurdle and we're trying to address that. All right, Eddie, we're getting the break here but I want to give you the last word. Uh, share with the folks out there the vibe here at Amazon. Um, what's going on with the show? Um, how important is Amazon in the future of our next generation revolution, computing revolution? I, I mean, obviously, they're kicking ass and taking names. What's your view? Yeah, I mean, AWS is critical to our strategy uh, from the you know, big data group, from the cyber group, from the uh, cloud group, all the stuff we're doing as well as with IoT and some of the initiatives we got going on in mining and manufacturing, that's all relying on AWS as a core for it. So, I mean, they're hugely important to us, and if you look at all the vendors around here, and I've talked to several of them today, I mean, there's new vendors popping up just to support AWS, where there's several of the companies I talk to here that their whole business is built on AWS. I mean, we're betting a big portion of ours, but there's companies here who wouldn't exist without that there, and they're building an ecosystem around them that's really become quite amazing. Awesome. Well, if you're watching this right now, I would like you to go to the Twitter, my Twitter feed, twitter.com slash furrier and give me an at reply and I will get back to you with a special gift live from theCUBE. We have a special giveaway. We have some swag we want to give away and uh, the at, at reply me, first one at reply gets the swag. Uh, at Furrier on Twitter. If you're watching right now, do it right now. We'll be right back with the next guest after this short break. <laughs>